Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. Upfront payment of $45 for three months required. New subscribers only. Renew for 12 months to lock in savings. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com. On today's Smart 7, Brianna Gay's killers jailed for life, power sharing restored in Northern Ireland, and lots more. It's Monday, 5th of February. It's World Nutella Day, and happy birthday, Alice Cooper. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. Saturday saw two 16-year-olds sentenced to life in prison at Manchester Crown Court following an 18-day trial into the murder of Brianna Gay. 16-year-old Brianna was fatally stabbed by her two teenage friends, Scarlett Jenkinson and Eddie Ratcliffe, at a park in Cheshire last year. It's thought the pair had both made concerning Google searches prior to the killing and Brianna's mum Esther is calling on the government to mandate tighter safety features on smartphones used by under-16s. We'd like a law introduced so that there are mobile phones that are suitable for under-16s, mm-hmm. which will not have all of the social media apps. I, f- I feel like it, it's such a simple solution, and I don't understand why we haven't actually done something like this already. But Education Secretary Gillian Keegan says the government has already taken steps to improve online safety. It, it is quite phones. radical to ban phones, smartphones from, from under-16s. That just shows just how much we know, we know and understand that this is really worrying to parents. But I think the, the steps that we've taken, they have yet to be seen by parents. So- It's been a massive weekend for Northern Ireland. After a power-sharing government was restored for the first time in two years on Saturday, the DUP walked out of Stormont in February 2022 and have been boycotting ever since in protest against post-Brexit trading agreements in Northern Ireland. But last week they signed a new deal with Westminster, which reduces checks on goods being transported from the rest of the UK into Northern Ireland and agreed to re-enter power-sharing. Sinn Féin's Michelle O'Neill has made history by becoming Northern Ireland's first nationalist first minister and says her premier signals a change in the country. My election to the post of First Minister demonstrates the change that's happening on this island. And that's a good thing. It's a healthy thing because this change, I think, can benefit us all. So when Mary Lou McDonald talks about that it is within d- touch and distance, I believe that we are in the decade of opportunity. The whole thing's renewed discussion into Irish reunification, but Labour's Chris Bryant says he's just happy to see power sharing restored. I'm absolutely delighted that we finally got proper government up and running in Northern Ireland. You know, it is quite an achievement. As for what will happen in the future, that, that depends on how the individual politicians play their hands, doesn't it? Almost 40 people have been killed this weekend following a series of US airstrikes in Iraq and Syria. The US launched strikes on dozens of targets linked to Iran-backed militia in retaliation for a deadly attack on US troops in Jordan at the end of January, which killed three American soldiers. On Saturday, British forces joined their US allies in launching strikes from warships and fighter jets on Houthi targets in Yemen. And White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says there's more to come. It began uh, with the strikes on Friday night, but that is not the end of it. We intend to take additional strikes uh, and additional action to continue to send a clear message that the United States will respond when our forces are attacked or our people are killed. The U.S. presidential primaries are underway and things appear to be going well for Joe Biden so far. Following his write-in victory in New Hampshire last week, the president easily won his first official primary in South Carolina this weekend, securing more than 95% of the vote. It's thought that his predecessor, Donald Trump, will capture the same state when the Republican primary is held there in two weeks' time. And speaking of Trump, he seems to be the inspiration behind Biden's campaign strategy this year. Here's the current president slagging him off at a speech in Delaware on Saturday. I'm feeling good about where we are. I really am. The folks uh, are starting to focus in. And the guy we're running against, uh, he's not for anything. He's against everything. And no, I mean, it's, a, it's the weirdest campaign I've ever been engaged in. It's even worse than in terms of his behavior than the last time in 2020. Still to come on the small seven. Defeat for Liverpool at the Emirates and women win big at the Grammys. Right after this. 
Have you ever Googled your own name? Prepare for a shock because your personal info, including addresses and phone numbers, is all out there. It's all harvested by data brokers and sold legally. Aura is a personal digital security service that scans the internet for your sensitive information and provides a full suite of privacy-enhancing tools. For a limited time, Aura is offering listeners a 14-day free trial at aura.com slash safety. That's A-U-R-A dot com slash safety to learn more and activate the 14-day trial period. Welcome back. It's been an exciting weekend in the Premier League, which saw West Ham destroyed 3-0 by Man United, Chelsea held off 4-2 by Wolves, and Newcastle unable to get past Luton Town in a thrilling 4-4 draw. Sunday brought a top-of-the-table clash between league leaders Liverpool and third-place Arsenal, and while Amagal Hay's own goal cancelled out an early lead for Arsenal, two second-half strikes secured a 3-1 win for the Gunners. They now sit just two points behind Liverpool at the top of the table. Here's manager Mikel Arteta on the half-time team talk that led to the win. And then we knew, you know, against them you're going to have difficult moments and our body language has to be extremely good today because we're going to suffer in moments. We have to stick together and we have to navigate through those moments. And we've done that and experience brings you that. You have to weigh your moment. We were ruthless when we had the chances to put them away as well. And it feels like a big, big win. And it feels like today as well we have connected in a different level again with our people because the atmosphere in the stadium was sensational. Sunday saw the red carpet rolled out at the Crypto.com Arena in LA for the 65th annual Grammys. It was a big year for women artists with Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, Cesar and Miley Cyrus taking home the major awards on the night. But it wouldn't be the Grammys without a little bit of controversy. There was a standing ovation for Celine Dion, who presented an award Jay-Z called out the Academy for never giving his wife album of the year. And Killer Mike, who won three awards, was escorted out of the arena in handcuffs. And to top it all off, Taylor Swift announced a new album is on the way as she she accepted her award for Album of the Year. I feel this happy when I finish a song or when I crack the code to a bridge that I love or when I'm shot listing a music video or when I'm rehearsing with my dancers or my band or getting ready to go to Tokyo to play a show. All I want to do is keep doing this. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do what I love so much. Mind blown. Thank you so much. Friday brought some sad news as it was announced that Rocky star and former NFL player Carl Weathers had passed away at the age of 76. An NFL linebacker for the Oakland Raiders, Carl first stepped into acting after his retirement from professional football in 1973. He got his start in exploitation films before securing his breakthrough role as Apollo Creed in Rocky in 1976. It's a role that he apparently only got after criticising Sylvester Stallone in his audition and his Rocky co-star eulogised him in a video posted to X on Friday, R.I.P. Carl. Carl Weathers was such an integral part of my life, my success, because when he walked into that room and I saw him for the first time, I saw greatness. But I didn't realize how great. I never could have accomplished what we did with Rocky without him. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.